Hey guys, this is Nicole. And this is George. And we are taking the Mach-E out for a ride today because it is absolutely a beautiful day here in Skagway. And we figured we would take you along with us, so stay tuned. In between mile marker four and right before mile marker five, you're gonna come across the Denver Glacier pullout on your way out of Skagway. And this glacier pullout is really something special to see. George, you wanna tell them why? Just to your right, you'll look over and see the Denver Glacier Valley. Uh, and this valley is actually the east fork of the Skagway River, and that's fed off of the Juneau Ice Fields, uh, which is a really cool area that runs about 85 miles from uh, that point that you'll see in just a minute all the way to Juneau. So between here and there, there's nothing but uh, snow, ice, and peaks the entire way. Uh, that's why they don't have a road in between because it's really kind of hard to, to put anything through there. Uh, but it really is kind of a spectacular sight, so we can't wait for you to see it. And I just want to pause for a second so you can hear how quiet it is in here. The car is literally on. That's why this car is the best car to take through the Yukon. Because you get nature at its finest. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around so you guys can see the Denver Glacier pull out now. Just past the Denver Glacier pullout, there is another pullout that you'll be able to see the train tracks from the White Pass Railway back here. So if you happen to drive by here at the right time, you might get an iconic photograph of the train crossing the tracks parallel to this road system. As you're driving, you'll notice that you're going to approach the U.S. Customs Office. You'll just drive right through here, and you'll notice that Canadian Customs is quite a ways away from here, um, but you'll see why soon. Hey guys, have you ever heard of the Alaska Pipeline? Well, guess what? <laughs> this right here, see that, it? It's not it. It's not the pipeline? No. What is it? That's a good question. What, do you think there's oil in there? You know what is in there? Water. Why? Because what they have to do is a little bit later in the season you'll actually see a really cool waterfall over there and in order for you guys to see it they pump the water all the way up and then let it run down the waterfall no not really either what that is actually is the goat lake hydroelectric pipeline so way up there on the very tops of those mountains there's a deep alpine lake uh, called goat lake and the water actually spills over the edge of goat lake and it goes down this pipeline and then way down there in the bottom of the valley, before it pours back into the Skagway River, uh, they harness the uh, hydroelectric power from it. And that pipeline is actually what powers uh, the bulk of Skagway, which is back down that way. This is also a great chance to take an epic photograph of this awesome car on the Klondike Highway. Right past mile marker nine, you're gonna see this pullout that has the, this is at the Dead Horse Gulch. And George is gonna tell you a little bit about this area. So the Dead Horse Gulch was a notoriously difficult part of the White Pass Trail. Uh, a trail that was uh, basically created in about 1886 when William Moore came to town. It was used by a lot of the gold rush miners uh, in between 1896 uh, in about 1900 before the completion of the White Pass Railroad to get up to Dawson City uh, so that they could search for their gold 600 miles north of here. And it was a really rough section. It climbed pretty steeply. You can actually see uh, the cut line of the railroad tracks as it makes its way up. And then high up on the mountainside up there, you'll see the railroad tracks where they almost reach the summit uh, at 2,888 feet before they go through that cut right over there in the middle. And uh, it's named the Dead Horse Gulch because so many horses were brought up here during the gold rush uh, that they were almost seen as expendable. And guys would uh, not really take good care of them. They were underfed. Um, they were just in, not in a good way. Uh, a lot of the horses made their way up this trail, uh, had to deal with some really steep drop-offs. Uh, and some of those horses were just worked to within an inch of their life. Uh, it's even said that some of those horses uh, actually took one final step on purpose over the edge of the Dead Horse Gulch uh, and that over 400 horses uh, were found dead at the bottom by the end of the gold rush. So it just kind of goes to show you uh, 
kind of man's inhumanity towards animals uh, in their quest for gold. Yes, and you may notice that there is a lot of snow on the mountaintops at this point. That is because it is still very early spring. It's May. Um, and so also one of the things you'll notice as you're driving along the Klondike Highway is that you might just see random waterfalls like this one, which probably won't be there come June or July. So um, keep your eyes open for those, but we'll show you one other special waterfall coming up soon. I promised you guys that I was about to show you another waterfall that's pretty special. If you see behind me, this waterfall here is Bridal Veil Falls. It may not look very spectacular now, but as the glacier and the snow starts to melt, this waterfall will be raging with water come the middle of the summer. And it is said that if you are a single woman and you drink from Bridal Veil Falls, that you will be engaged within a year. We actually know a couple people that got engaged within a year after drinking from this waterfall. So single ladies, here's your shot. You guys, this is my most favorite stop on this whole drive on the Klondike Highway, and it is just a special place. Um, if you notice behind me, and I'll show you a view, there is uh, the William Moore Bridge. So this is a cantilever bridge that has now since been replaced by a new bridge, um, but there is a pull-off over there. We couldn't pull off right now because it's still covered in snow, but if you come here later in the summer, there is a place where you can pull off there and park and take some really epic pictures. But even so, that being said, this pull-out right past that stop is my favorite stop, and now I'm gonna show you why. Wow. Wow, wow. This, to me, is one of the most epic views here along this drive. You'll notice on the top left, those are the Sawtooth Mountains, and this direction is facing towards Skagway. So if you went back down the hill um, towards this way, you would get back to Skagway. But this is my absolute favorite. And if you swing back over here by where that bridge is, there is actually a place, um, you can kind of see where it kind of is a dent in the mountain. And during the summertime, there is a waterfall that runs there too. So uh, this is a definite stop. This is the pull out right past the scenic overlook that you'll pass where the bridge is. Um, definitely want to stop here. Just past the summit of the mountain, you're going to come to the Welcome to Alaska sign. Of course, when you're here, there's probably not going to be this big berm of snow that's here. If you're here in the midsummer, it's going to be nice and snow melted. Probably be able to see the mountains a little bit more too. You might want to wait for this stop on your way back to Skagway, but if you're so excited that you want to get this picture and not forget, you can stop on the way up like we did. At this same location where the Welcome to Alaska sign is, you'll notice behind me, back here, there's an Inuk shuck. That is back here, <laughs> the border, the Canadian border. So the technical border is up here at the summit of the mountain. And so now you know why they don't have the customs, U.S. customs up here and the Canadian customs up here because during the dead of winter, it is way too cold. The weather is just too harsh up here. So the border is on separate ends and there's kind of like this no man's land in between here. But the technical Canadian border is right through this little rocky area here. So um, our next stop will be in Canada. Once you come across the Canadian border, you will see a pull-off, and this is what it looks like right now in the middle of May 
Um, when you come in the middle of summer, there's going to be beautiful lakes here. Uh, you won't even recognize it. And maybe I'll just post a picture of what it looks like in the summer so you can see that. But if you need to use the potty, this is a good place to do it because these are what we refer to as international bathrooms. And on that note, George is going to tell you a little joke. Yeah, because when you're on your way to those bathrooms, you're Russian. When you're in the bathroom, European. And when you come out, you're Finnish. That's why it's international bathrooms. So there you go. This area where the bathrooms are, see, we just talked about the bathrooms, is also known as the Tormented Valley. I mentioned to you that the reason why the border station is not on the top of the mountain is because it is very difficult weather here. And you can even see now it's May and there's still a ton of snow here. So in the winter time, this area gets really, really harsh weather. Um, and, you know, during the gold rush days, this was a difficult place for them to travel. Look, cool car back there. Um, and so this area is another great place to stop and just take in the beauty that surrounds us here because the views here are spectacular. When I mention that the views are spectacular, I'm just going to give you a little peek of what you have in store. Wow, wow, wow. No matter how many times I do this drive, I'm still in awe and I have to pinch myself. It is amazing. So this is the Tormented Valley. Remember, we are now in Canada and you'll see this sign right next to what is it, George? I almost said mile marker. <laughs> Kilometer, 36 kilometer. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> the, right by the sign. Um, you're entering a different time zone. So Alaska is its own time zone. Once you enter into Canada, it's going to be a one hour ahead of us in Alaska. So just keep that in mind as you're traveling today. Um, that once you cross back into Alaska, you will gain an hour. So um, that should just help you on your way. Also keep in mind that now that you're in Alaska, you are looking at uh, kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour. So keep that in mind when you're watching your speed. And in this point, we're about just a little under one kilometer from Canadian Customs. So that's going to be your next stop is Canadian Customs. I cannot record that because it's not allowed, um, but you will go through. So at this point, you want to make sure that you have your passports ready and your Arrive Can app, and you'll be on your way through Canadian Customs. After Canadian Customs, your next chance to use the bathroom is going to be right here at Log Cabin. There's some porta potties over there. Um, also, right past this railroad track is an area that if you're going to see moose, it might be in this area. So keep your eyes open. Um, and then the next section on here is going to be the Yukon Suspension Bridge. So if you guys want to take a stop there, um, we are nearing that destination. Right around kilometer 58, you're going to come across one of the first big lakes here in uh, Canada. This is Lake Tushai, and there are a couple pull-offs like the one we just passed that you can stop at along this route. Uh, the lakes are still frozen over at this time, but in the summer months, you'll be able to see beautiful, pristine lakes. Um, and depending upon what time you come, you might even get to see some beautiful fireweed. So this is Lake Tushai. The next lake that you're going to see as you travel along the Klondike Highway is going to be Tagish Lake. And soon, around this bend, you will get to the Welcome to the Yukon sign. So technically, you've been in British Columbia on this route until you get to this sign. And there is also a sign there that's a Welcome to British Columbia sign for on your way back. So be sure to stop there and take pictures. Also. This mountain that's right in front of us is across from that Welcome the Yukon sign, and you might see some mountain goats or some tall sheep up there. So take a look um, if you've got some binoculars because you might see some wildlife in this area. And here we are at the Welcome to the Yukon sign. So this is another great picture stop for you along the way. Now I'm going to get out of the car for a second and show you that I just saw some wildlife. 
Okay, so while you're looking at this mountain, what you're going to want to look for is little white dots. It almost looks like snow, but it's not because if you look closer, and I'm going to zoom in, but realize that I'm going to lose focus here, those three little dots right there are some wildlife. And those you can find all along this mountainside. So take a look and see if you find some. Here is an informational sign about the wildlife in the area. So it talks about the doll sheep and the mountain goats. And that's what you're going to see up on this mountain. So be sure to take a look. And on the other side of the parking lot is your welcome to BC sign. So you can get both your signs. So you can get a welcome to Alaska, welcome to BC, and welcome to the Yukon all along this route. All right, guys, just as you pass the Yukon sign, uh, you'll come up to this awesome wooden structure over here on the right-hand side that looks like it's been there forever. Uh, it's actually been there since about 1910, and that was the old ore chute that they used to load uh, mining ore from the Venus Mine, which is actually up on the hillside. Uh, they used to lower that ore down into that chute, load it onto a barge, send it to Carcross, put it on the train, and send it to Skagway, uh, and then send it uh, out for processing from there. So that ore had to go on a long journey. Uh, that was all created by a guy named John Conrad, and those mines were operational for about uh, 15 years uh, until it got too expensive to move the ore out, and then they closed everything down. The kind of ore you'll find up there would be uh, copper, zinc, nickel, uh, and silver. You guys, keep your eyes peeled. Wildlife. We wanted to see a bear. And there he is, look. It's our first bear of the season that we've seen. You wanna make sure you keep a safe distance from the bears. Do not feed the bears because a fed bear, a fed bear is a dead bear. Um, you don't want them to get used to being around people. Um, make sure that you keep a safe distance. Um, don't get out of the car. But there you go, just for you. We're approaching one of George's favorite destinations along the Klondike Highway. Uh, there is a pullout that you can stop at to see this area better, but there is an island out there in Tagish Lake. You can see to the right-hand side. Um, this here that we're approaching, we're walking now along the pull-off for Bove Island, is Bove Island. It's an island in the middle of Tagish Lake, and it's one of George's favorite places to stop. He always wants to cross over in the winter time when it's frozen over to go see what's on the island, but I won't let him because he says I'm the fun police. But I'm sure people have been there before. Maybe kayak over there, canoe over there. Do you guys hear that loud car that drove by? It wasn't the Mustang because the Mustang's nice and quiet. Bove Island. You guys, we just spotted some more wildlife. This is a caribou on the side of the road. You want to be very careful. They're kind of dumb. I apologize, there's a little bit of glare because it's nice and sunny today. Um, but we are now approaching Carcross. So as you approach Carcross, if you look over to the left, and I'm probably going to blind you if I do that, but <laughs> there is a bridge over there. Um, and we are crossing another bridge and there's some pretty spectacular views but up ahead is uh, the little town of Carcross uh, we definitely recommend stopping here grab a bite to eat check out some of the local artisans that are here um, and walk around for a bit So the really cool thing about this car is that you don't need to charge it on this trip. The drive from Skagway to Emerald Lake and back has enough of a charge uh, that you don't need to stop. But we are going to stop here in Carcross because they have a fast rapid charger and we've never used one before. So we're going to check it out. See, look, George is driving, beautiful scenery, and we are pulling into, um, what is this? What is this called, George? 
I just lost my words. Like the tribal Tagish center. Tagish First Nation Learning Center. Oh, Tagish First Nation Nations Learning Center has a fast charger. And right now, the cost for the fast charger in the Yukon is free. So we're going to get out and test it. So here we go. So we are at the Tagish Learning Center, Tagish First Nations Learning Center here in Carcross. And I have the app Flow, which you see it, Flow uh, EV Charger app. And once I have that app, I can just go ahead and hit start and then plug the car in and it's going to go ahead and charge it. So let's see how this rapid charger thing works. So we've been sitting here at the charger for about 10 minutes now, and we started at 63% and we are already at 78% full. So it's super cool. I'm really pumped about this. Didn't need to stop and get power, but we thought let's try it. We haven't done it. We only charge on a, you know, a slow charger. Um, and thought, let's see how fast this thing really works. So best part about it, zero dollars up here in the Yukon for a flow station. So it's free. It's free. No need to get gas. Great ride here up into the Yukon from Skagway, Alaska. Just past the town of Carcross, you will come across the Carcross Desert. It is the world's smallest desert and it's in the middle of the Yukon. Not actually technically a desert because they get a little too much moisture and rain and precipitation. However, it is the basin of an old alpine lake uh, and all the glacial silt from the current Bennett Lake, which would be to your left, gets blown across the street and it gets hung up uh, in the old alpine lake basin over here and it turns it into what looks like a giant desert and sand dunes, which is really kind of cool and super unexpected in the middle of the Yukon. Yes, and you'll probably see um, Yukoners down here uh, on in dune buggies, four wheelers, also dirt bikes. Uh, so this is a fun place for people to come play. Um, it also has a bathroom. So if you need to go to the bathroom, this is another place you can go. And also in the town of Carcross, they do have some public restrooms as well. After leaving, leaving the Carcross Desert, you're going to come up to Caribou Crossings. This is another great destination, a great place to stop, especially if you are a fan of husky puppies, because chances are you're going to be able to hold some husky puppies and maybe even do a dog sled tour if you want to try that as well. Uh, they have a petting farm and what else? They've got a muse like a museum. Wildlife museum, an RCMP museum. Uh, and lunch. Yeah, lunch, ice cream, and Those so... really good cinnamon sugar donuts. <laughs> George says they have really good cinnamon sugar donuts. So um, that is another choice. And our next stop is going to be your final destination on this trip, uh, at least on this direction. And then you'll head back to Skagway after this. Um, but we're heading to Emerald Lake. So here we are. We've reached Emerald Lake. And as you can see, it is still frozen. So, you know, you never know. When we came up here in early May on our cruise, the first time we came up before we moved up here, it wasn't frozen. Uh, but we had an especially cold and snowy winter, and so it is still frozen now. Um, but if you can imagine that when it's not frozen, it is very beautiful greens and blues, and it is a spectacular sight to see. Um, so this is going to be your end point on this journey um, before you head back down to Skagway. And I'm just going to pan over this way and show you the views from this direction. Uh, the crazy thing about this is Every day looks different up here. Every season looks a little bit different. The wildlife are in different locations and different places. Um, and even though you just drove up here and you have to drive back the same direction, you're actually going to have a totally different viewpoint going back to Skagway. So it's going to look totally different. So we just want you to really uh, enjoy this journey. We can't think of a better way to take this trip up into the Yukon uh, than to drive in this car. I mean, it is silent. It's fast. You don't have to pay for gas. It's roomy. Um, and it's here waiting for you to rent it at klondikecars.com.